today I'll be showing you how to install macOS Big Sur on a PC. macOS Big Sur offers a lot of new features for developers, creators, and many more, as well as being the most up-to-date version of macOS. This guide will use OpenCore, and you also don't need a developer account in order for this to work. You'll need an Intel CPU that's Haswell or newer. I have not gotten it to work on any AMD CPUs or any CPUs older than Haswell. You'll need an AMD GPU, a PC with Windows 10 installed, an internet connection, a 4GB USB drive or larger, and some basic Googling skills. So to install macOS Big Sur, we're going to first install Catalina on our PC, and then we're going to update to Big Sur from there. Any downloads, links, or guides mentioned will be in the description down below. We'll begin by creating the USB stick that we're going to boot off of and install macOS using a tool called Gib macOS to do so. Download Gib macOS and open Gib macOS.bat. When it opens, press R and then hit enter to enter recovery mode, and then choose the version of macOS that you want. Since we want to install the latest version of macOS Catalina, in this case, I will choose the latest non-beta version, which is number three, and then I'll press enter. It will begin to download a file which we need to create the installer. Next, open makeinstall.bat from the same folder and find the drive number that corresponds to your USB stick. Press that number and then O. In my case, I would press 1 O and then enter. If you don't press O, it will not use OpenCore as the bootloader and will instead use Clover as the bootloader, which is what we don't want. It will now ask you for the file that you just downloaded in the step before. Go to your downloads folder, then give macOS master, macOS downloads, public release, some macOS version, then hold shift and right click on the file in the folder. Select copy as path and then paste it back into the terminal and press enter. It'll take some time, but your USB stick will be renamed boot with most of the necessary files that we need. Now we'll start removing unnecessary files on our USB stick. Open your USB stick in File Explorer and navigate to EFI, OC, and drivers and remove everything in it except for open runtime.efi. Go back to the OC folder and open the tools folder. Remove everything in it except for openshell.efi. Okay, now we can begin adding files to our USB stick. There are only three types of files that we actually need to add to our USB stick, and those are SSDTs, which go in the EFI slash OC slash ACPI folder, Kexts, which go in the EFI slash OC slash Kexts folder, and firmware drivers, which go in the EFI slash OC slash drivers folder on our USB stick. To start, we only need one firmware driver, and that's hfsplus.efi. This is needed to see HFS volumes, which is used by macOS installers and recovery partitions in macOS. Download the file and put it in the EFI slash OC slash drivers folder on your USB stick. Next, we'll gather our kexts or kernel extensions. Think of them as things that help to emulate our hardware in order for it to work in macOS. They are a little bit like drivers in the sense that you would need a GPU kext and an ethernet kext like you would for a GPU driver or an ethernet driver in Windows. Kexts are in the form of folders, so make sure you drag the entire folder over when you're copying them to your USB stick. If there's a DSIM file, don't copy it. And if given the choice between a debug and release file, make sure you always choose the release file. The two kexts that we absolutely need to run macOS are Virtual SMC and Lulu. Virtual SMC emulates the SMC or System Management Controller on Genuine Macs, which handles a lot of hardware level controlling. Lulu is needed for a lot of other kexts to run. Download Virtual SMC and move Virtual SMC, SMC Processor, and SMC Super IO into the EFI slash OC slash Kexts folder. They will all be in the downloaded folder when you first go to the link in the description. Download Lulu and move it to the Kexts folder as well. There are a lot of Kexts, so I recommend pausing the video after each one, downloading them, moving them over, and then coming back to the video. First, we'll need the Kext Whatever Green, which helps with GPU patching, Apple ALC for audio, and USB inject all for injecting USB controllers. If your motherboard chipset is in the following list, you'll also need the Kext XHCI unsupported. Common chipsets are H370, B360, H310, X79, X99, and all ASRock motherboards except for B460 and Z490 motherboards. You'll also need an Ethernet driver as well as a Wi Fi or Bluetooth driver if you have Wi Fi or Bluetooth. For Ethernet drivers, search up the name of your motherboard and then find which company or model your Ethernet port is on your motherboard. Common ones are Intel, Atheros or Killer, or Realtek. I will leave a link in the description which will help you choose which Ethernet kext you need, as well as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth kexts. 
There are also some extra kecks that you may or may not need. If you have an Intel HEDT or high-end desktop CPU, make sure you download CPU TSC Sync and move that to your folder. If you have a non-Apple NVMe drive, download NVMe Fix. Move all of the files to the EFI slash OC slash kext folder on your USB drive. The last set of files that we need are SSDTs. SSDTs are things that you can use to patch things in macOS in order for it to work. Each generation of CPUs has a specific set of SSDTs that you need. You can refer to this chart to see which ones you need. Since I have a Haswell CPU, I'll need SSDD plug and SSDT EC. Since each SSDT needs to be compiled, I will leave a link in the description where you can click on each SSDT and figure out how to compile them. Right now I'm using SSDT time to easily compile the needed SSDTs and then moving them into the EFI slash OC slash ACPI folder. All of that will be in the guide in the description below. Once you have all of your files, it's time to edit the config.plist file. Since it takes about 5 to 10 minutes to actually edit, and it's also specific for each generation of Intel CPUs, I will leave a guide on how to do it in the description below. Follow that and make sure you edit all of the BIOS things and do the sanity check at the very bottom. And once you've done all of that, come back to this video when you're ready to start installing. Now we'll begin to install macOS. Boot off of your USB, the UEFI option if available, and when the list of boot options appears, select macOS base system external by using your arrow keys and then pressing enter. OpenCore will automatically choose the selected option if you don't press an arrow key within a few seconds, so make sure you choose it when the boot menu appears. When the macOS installer appears, choose disk utility, click view at the top, and then choose show all volumes. Click on your SSD and then select format. Name it whatever you like and make sure it's formatted as APFS and GUID partition table. Close out of disk utility once it's done and then install Catalina. Once it's done, it will automatically reboot. Boot off of your USB stick again and then choose macOS installer. Install macOS and then when your PC reboots, Boot off the USB stick again, and then choose the name of your drive that you put in earlier. You will be able to go through the normal macOS installation process, and then you'll be in macOS. Once you're in macOS, go to betaprofiles.com and download and install the macOS 11 beta key. This should allow us to install macOS Big Sur on our Hackintosh. When it's done installing, an update window should pop up, and macOS Big Sur beta will begin downloading. Install it onto your drive once it's done downloading, and after it's done, it will automatically reboot. Boot off of your USB stick, and then choose macOS installer, and it will begin to install. Once it's done, it will reboot again. Boot off of your USB stick again, and choose the name of your drive. You should now be in macOS Big Sur. The last thing that we have to do is move our EFI folder from our USB stick to our SSD. That way we don't have to boot off of the USB stick continuously and we can use our SSD to boot instead. Download mount EFI and run mount EFI command. Select the number of your drive to mount it or press B and then enter. Then go to finder and then drag the EFI folder on your USB stick to the EFI partition on your SSD. It should just be labeled EFI and it should be right below your USB stick. Shut down your computer and then eject your USB. Boot back up and you should be able to boot off of your SSD now. If you're having any issues, I'll leave a bunch of troubleshooting guides in the description below. If you'd like to see the full documentation for the guide that I use, it will also be in the description. All right, thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you enjoyed, down if you didn't. Subscribe for more tech content and follow me on Twitter at RealBrandonYen. All right, see you guys next time.